the overthinking dude here and on this channel I'm going to guide you to understand and enjoy physics rather than memorizing just bunch of formulas. At the end of this video you're going to understand two of the most important physics laws. In physics you can imagine force to be uh, either a push or a pull intuitively. Now let us imagine there's a ground, maybe it's made of ice, and there's an object on top of it. So what happens when we give it some initial push? It's gonna start moving to the right and then it's gonna slow down and stop, right? That's what we expect normally. Now if you want to move this object for longer, then we would have to keep on pushing this object. But do we really need to always push this object? Certainly it's correct if we are on Earth, where there is always some type of a stopping force. But here comes the brilliant idea of Newton's first law. If you think about it, we live in this universe where it is mostly empty space. If we want to have a physics law, it should also work everywhere, not just on Earth. So it should work in space too. And that's the idea of universality of physics laws. Because if a physics law doesn't work somewhere, why have it as a law, right? It's basically useless. So now let's try to imagine if the object is in space, what happens if we give it some initial push. So when you think about it, the object is gonna keep on moving and moving unless it hits something. Because there's no force that is slowing it down. Newton's first law basically says a body in motion stay in motion. But basically it's gonna have the same speed and gonna go in the same direction unless acted upon by a force. Now let us go back to the prior example. And generate three different versions of it. And when you apply three different initial pushes, uh, the stronger you push, the farther it goes, right? That's the common sense. Therefore, we can ask ourselves if force is directly proportional to speed. That means the stronger you push, the faster it goes. So, we're gonna question that. Uh, if force is directly proportional to the speed, we can add a proportionality constant, which is like a, a mass, quote unquote. And let's analyze this again in space, because universality of physics laws. Now, let's give the body an initial push and pass. Here we can see the body still has some speed. However, we have stopped pushing it, so the force must be zero at this moment. And if you were to plug this into the equation, you'll get zero equals mv. And this basically results in speed uh, or velocity to be equal to zero, which it isn't. Therefore, we can derive that the force cannot be equal to mass times speed, mass and quote-unquote. And here again, Newton had another brilliant idea, which is the force must be equal to mass times acceleration. There's a star there, uh, so it actually is not correct. There are some special cases. We are going to talk about that in another video. But let's go back to the Newton's second law. By the way, if you don't know what acceleration is, acceleration is rate of change of velocity, which means how much speed you're gaining in each second. Now, if you know calculus, then acceleration A equals dv over dt, the first are the derivative of the velocity. But actually you don't have to really know calculus to understand this concept. So we're just gonna change that into delta v over delta t, which means change of speed divided by change of time. 
And if you rearrange this equation, we are going to get one of the consequences of this equation. We get force times time over mass equals change of speed. So that means we have to apply force for a certain amount of time to achieve a change in velocity. Now, the implication of this law is that there is no such thing as an instantaneous force. So a force is, must be applied for a certain amount of time and also speed does not change instantly. So that means if the object is like moving with like 10 meters per second and even if it hits a wall, it's going to slow down for a certain amount of time, however small that time might be. It may be imperceptible to people, but there's still some amount of time. Now let's go back to this space once again and let us push the object for a small amount of time and let it go. And this time we can plot some graphs. One graph for force with respect to time and another graph for speed with respect to time. Now if we push the object for a small amount of time, say at 0.5 seconds, it's going to look like that on the graph in red. Initial 0.5 seconds, we have 10 units of force and after that we are going to stop pushing, so 0 units of force. And correspondingly, what we're going to have is initial that 0.5 second where there is a force, our speed is going to constantly increase. And once we stop pushing, due to the Newton's first law, a body in motion is going to stay in motion, there's no additional force now, so it's just going to keep on going at that same speed. And we are going to plot the force and the speed in real time, so let's go now. One interesting thing you notice about this graph is that 10 units of force applied for 0.5 seconds gave us 10 times 0.5 equals 5 units of speed. Here I have assumed the mass of the object is 1 unit or 1 kilogram. We can also say that the body has accelerated for 0.5 seconds with each second gaining 10 meters per second. But there's only 0.5 seconds, so in total the speed it gained is 5 meters per second when you multiply 10 times 0.5. And now let us go back to the example we have seen before where we push the body and the body kept on moving at the same speed. And you may say, hey, we are pushing with some force, but then the speed is not changing. And that should not be the case. F equals mass times acceleration, so it should accelerate. But here we have to understand that Newton's second law, when it talks about the force, it talks about the total force. And in this case, there is an opposing friction force and in the end actually the forces add up to zero. So there is zero change of speed and the body keeps on moving and moving and moving. And if you enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up and subscribe and see you guys next time.